I had a question come my way recently to the effect of, do I need to create a primary key property when I model my core data entities? I'm going to tackle answering this one with an Xcode sample project I built a while back and put out on GitHub. If you go to github.com forward slash Andrew C. Bancroft forward slash Zootastic, you're going to be able to clone the repository and follow along with me if you'd like. This repo in its corresponding core data model is zoo themed. Don't judge me, my kids love animals, so I couldn't help myself. The data model itself for this project looks like this. What I'm going to do is focus in on just one of those entities in this video, namely the zoo entity. With that context in mind, let's think about primary keys. Do you need them when you're modeling entities in a core data project? Well, let's consider what primary keys are for, first of all. Essentially what you're after when you specify a primary key in a relational database scenario is a guarantee of uniqueness of a row in a table. You want to make sure that a given representation, a given instance, or one row of an entity can be uniquely identified, and that's typically done by adding an ID column with a sequential, unrepeated integer value called a primary key. That way, even though you might have two rows that have similar information, such as these two zoos with the same name, you can always represent the city zoo in Denver, Colorado with the unique ID of 1, and the city zoo in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma with the ID of 3. No need to splice together multiple columns like the name and the location to come up with a unique identifier for the row. Just refer to it by its ID and you're good to go. Well, that's in a relational database scenario. What about core data? Suppose our data model has this zoo entity with two properties, location and name. The question at hand is, do you need to add this zoo ID property or not? By far, the most common use case with apps using core data is to use the NS SQLite store type as the underlying persistent store. And guess what that gives you? A relational database under the hood. What this means is that core data simply acts as an abstraction layer over that underlying persistent store. Data is actually saved inside of a SQLite relational database. When you create entities with attributes in your core data model, well, those turn into tables with columns in the SQLite database. What I want to do right now is show you what happens when your core data model is initialized in an app using core data with a SQLite persistent store. And what you're going to discover is that core data has got your back when it comes to primary keys. Watch this. If you edit the scheme of this Zootastic app, you can get a little bit of extra debug information related to the SQL queries that are being run under the hood as core data interacts with your persistent store. Under Run, you can add an argument that's passed when the app is launched to get this extra debug information. Use the dash com dot apple dot core data dot SQL debug switch and pass 1 as the argument. Running the app loads a ton of text into this debug console output, but what I'm interested in showing you is right up here at the top. Do you see this right here? Core Data sends a create table statement to the SQLite database engine, and within the columns it creates is this z underscore pk integer column as a primary key. But I haven't listed a primary key property in my entity. Seeing the fact that even though I don't put in a special primary key property, Core Data still creates that column in the SQLite database. Seeing that fact, my answer would be no. You don't need to specify a special ID property to serve as your entity's primary key because Core Data knows this internally and creates one automatically. Now, just in case you're skeptical and don't believe that that column is actually in the database, I want to show you explicitly that it is there. At the top of this debug output, do you see this? It's a path to the SQLite database file that the app is using. I'm going to copy it and jump over to a terminal session. CD to that directory and list its contents. Zootastic.sqlite is what I want to peek into, so I'm going to run SQLite 3 with that file specified. If you run .table, SQLite will list out all the tables in this database file. If you run .schema on ZZOO, which is the zoo table, it shows you that yes, indeed, the primary key column is present in the database table that holds the zoos for the app. Selecting all columns from the zoo table shows that it is populated with integer values as you would expect. So the bottom line, you don't need to explicitly create an ID column to serve as a primary key. Core Data takes care of that for you. 
If you're learning Core Data, you might enjoy my Core Data Fundamentals with Swift course on Pluralsight. I cover the essentials to get you up and running with Core Data in your apps developed for Apple's platforms. Thanks for watching.